start with our next topic that is retinoschisis. So basically retinoschisis means splitting of layers of retina. So what do you mean by splitting? So let's say we have 10 layers in retina. So when I told you about the retinal detachment, there is a detachment between the last layer that is the retinal pigment epithelium and the rest of the layers that we called a neurosensory retina. So in between that, there is a fluid accumulation. So this is retinal detachment. What happens in the case of retinoschisis is that there is a detachment between the inner layers. The most common layer where there is a detachment in retinoschisis is outer plexiform layer. So there is a detachment of outer in outer plexiform layer in the case of retinoschisis and in the case of retinal detachment that it, there is a splitting at the level of neurosensory retina and retinal pigment epithelium. Now how would you detect a case of retinoschisis? So basically the patients with retinoschisis come with chief complaints of an absolute scotoma in front of eye. So at some point of time and some uh, point in the field of vision the patient is not able to see so that is called absolute scotoma. Also he would have a field loss corresponding to the place where there is a retinoschisis. You would see a shallow elevation in the case of retinoschisis. Sometimes you see a cartwheel maculopathy also. So near the macula you see these type of striations. So you can get a cartwheel maculopathy. Now retinoschisis on the basis of the classification is divided into two parts adult or senile retinoschisis and juvenile retinoschisis. So the juvenile retinoschisis is basically an X-link recessive disease. Sometimes it is called variants of coast disease also. The adult retinoschisis you see in the patients of around 40 to 50 years or even more than that. You get a straight shallow elevation of retina. On OCT you get a picture like this where there is a splitting of layers. Also. In these cases, if you apply laser spots on the retina, they will blanch. Blanch means they become pale. In contrast to the retinal attachment where if you put a laser spot on the uh, portion of the retinal attachment, there won't be any effect. Also. In these cases, this splitting or of the retinal layers, they do not respond to the or do not reappose with scleral depressor. What does this mean? That let's say in this case. I put a depressor here and try to oppose this retinal pigment epithelium with the neurosensory retina. Since there is a break, so this fluid can go through this break and get back to the vitreous cavity and here comes the opposition between the neurosensory retina 
and the retinal pigment epithelium but since there is no hole or no break in the uh, retinoschisis there won't be any opposition with the scleral depressor so these are the two points that can basically determine whether it is a retinal attachment or whether it is a retinoschisis now the most common site of retinoschisis is inferotemporal this you have to remember only also sometimes you get a beaten metal appearance so how to understand beaten metal appearance so because of uh, the splitting of the retina these rp cells sometimes they get displaced and they are deposited here and there in the inner retinal layers and it feels like a beaten metal appearance so yellowish gray lesions you get in the shallow elevation of the retinoschisis so that feels like a beaten metal appearance normally you don't need any treatment on the cases of retinoschisis sometimes it's it resolution or the results on its own but in case this retinoschisis involves fovea or we called a fovea schisis or if the wall breaks off okay so the fluid can go inside and then it can create a uh, retinal attachment the secondary retinal attachment in that cases you need to treat it in the same terms as you treat a retinal attachment one important question that can be asked in this topic is that the risk factor for the retinoschisis is high myopia because in high myopia there is stretching of the retina so these are some important points regarding the retinoschisis retinoschisis per se is not a very important topic for your ug exams but it has been asked once in aims so uh, ug students and uh, students preparing for the M fmg and the mci can skip this uh, skip this topic otherwise just have a look of for 5 minutes don't need to get panic if you get a question on this only thing is that if the topic is repeated again at least you should have an idea what is retinoschisis thank you